Ooh. Oh. <laughs> so you want to learn to play Hideous Abomination 2nd Edition. How did you get in here? Who let you in? You know what? It's fine. It's fine. We'll just... We'll keep rolling. <clears throat> Hideous Abomination 2nd Edition is a vile tile-laying game where you combine hundreds of gross body parts to create weird creatures. It's for groups of 2 to 6, and it's aimed at ages 8 all the way to death. Although post-death, you can still be useful in what I like to call expert mode. Plus, there are simplified instructions for ages 5 and up. So literally anyone can enjoy Hideous Abomination. Except for toddlers and infants. They would eat the dice. To set up, put out a beautiful flat lay, snap a pic and post it on Instagram, and then set the box and the instruction manual aside. Also find these 10 blank tiles and set them aside unless you've already used them to draw your own beautiful abomination, in which case you can shuffle them in with the rest. Next up, take this giant stack of body part tiles and shuffle them all together. It's kind of tough. You might have a difficult time trying to riffle shuffle these. They are square and there's a lot of them, so it's not the easiest task in the world. What we recommend doing is pile shuffling them all together. So create a bunch of piles, put them out like so, stack them all up until you're all done, and then collect those stacks in a random order, and you should have a pretty well shuffled deck. Good to go. Set the reference cards nearby. Deal out a torso to every player randomly. Find and display the three grand prizes where all players can easily see them. Then shuffle the awards pile and set it nearby. Place these tie trackers aside until the end of the game. Place the bolt tokens where all players can easily reach them. Plop the die right in the middle of the center of the table somewhere. And then we're going to deal out three tiles from the top of the deck to form the spare parts buffet. Then we just deal three tiles to each player to form their opening hand. And you're all set up and ready to play. Play will rotate with players rolling the die and performing a specific action based on the result. They will then play a tile from their hand onto any abomination and conclude their turn by discarding a tile from their hand onto one of the three spare parts piles. So let's take a quick look at a tile. Tiles have a few characteristics. For example, they have a type. This one is a head. There are 10 different body part types, as you can see on the player reference card here. It also has attributes. This one has seven teeth and two eyes out of the possible six different attributes that tiles can have. It also has a color, which is indicated by the artwork and the iconography. This one is teal, and there are nine different colors, plus a wild color, which counts as any of them. So you can see this tile, for example, is a wild hand, which means it counts as any color. So now let's take a look at the die. There are five different options on here. The first one, this little eyeball here, is draw. It's on there twice. There's dig, there's steal, there's award and there's go mad. And we're gonna look at each of these in turn and what their effects are. On their first turn, players are just going to perform the draw action. So they won't roll, they will save rolling for subsequent turns. They'll look at all three of the face-up spare parts piles or they can pick one blind from the top of the deck to draw and put into their hand. Uh, and then they would do the same again. So they could again select from any of these four options. So say I wanna take this tile, I pick that up and put that into my hand and I'm done with my draw action. I could alternately take two from the top of the pile or I could alternatively take two from the spare parts buffet. I could take this one and I could then also take the one directly underneath it if I wanted that I just revealed. So I can dig a little bit deeper into a pile and I should wind up with five tiles in my hand. So now let's take a look at dig. With Dig, I have to pick one single spare parts pile to review, so I can't look at it ahead of time. I have to select it and then pick it up, and then I can review all the tiles in that pile and choose two that I want to put in my hand. So I'll go for these two yellow ones, and I can put the others back in any order that I want, so I can put this knee on top if I wanted. And then I'll just add the last two to my hand, and I should have five tiles in hand once again. And I'm ready to play these on any abomination. If I roll steel, I get to look at every player's abomination except my own and choose a tile to take and put in my hand. I can't take torso tiles, and I can't take tiles that are bolted down like these two are. But all the rest of these would be fair game to me, so these three here. Uh, let's say I want the red one. I'm going to nab that, and I'm going to stick it in my hand, and then I'm going to immediately give that player two bolt tokens. They will take those bolt tokens and immediately bolt down any unbolted parts on their abomination like so. This will help protect their abomination against future theft. So what happens if a player doesn't have enough tiles to use all their bolt tokens? Well, they would bolt down any tiles that they can, and they would hold on to other bolt tokens to use for bolting down the next tiles played on their abomination, like so. 
If a player rolls a ward, they would take a new award from the top of the stack and put it next to any already displayed. So here we're going to grab out Brainy, and we're going to put it next to Crotchety and Boney that are already down. That becomes a new objective that all players are working towards. They would then perform the draw action as previously described. If there are ever more awards displayed than the number of players, the necessary condition for the end of the game has been met. So if we got four players, we got five awards here, we don't count the grand prizes, just these five, it would mean a player could play the final tile of Abomination and end the game. Last, we've got Go Mat. This is a wild tile that can do any of the other actions we've previously described. So you pick one and you perform that action. So once players have rolled and performed an action, they will then play a tile from their hand onto any abomination. So I could play it on my own, or I could play it on an opponent's creature. So let's say I'm working at red, and I want to stick this head on my abomination somewhere. I could pop it right there, matching up loose ends to loose ends, or I could pop it right there. Both of those are valid plays. I might also want to play on my opponent. So if we look at this player, they've only got one loose end left before they can complete their abomination. But if I take this four-way and pop it right here, suddenly they have three loose ends they need to tie off before they can complete their abomination and finish the game. So that's a good way to sabotage players. Uh, while we're talking about placements, let's talk about invalid placements. So while this is cool because we're matching loose ends up, if I push it over here, this would not be valid because if you look at this side, we're not matching loose ends to loose ends. So I couldn't also take maybe this hand and I couldn't put it right here because those aren't loose ends matched or over here, this wouldn't be valid. So just check when you're playing that you're placing tiles in valid locations. Keep in mind that if you close off the final loose end of an abomination, it ends the game. So placing this here would end the game for all players. And I cannot do this unless the number of awards revealed is greater than the total number of players. This may mean choosing an alternative action. At the end of turn, I need to discard down to three cards left in hand. If I perform steal action, I might only have three, so my turn would be over. But otherwise, I need to select one of these four tiles to pick and discard onto one of the three spare parts buffet piles. So I could pop this right here in the middle like this, and then my turn would be complete. Play will rotate clockwise until one player completes their abomination and ends the game. It's also possible to end the game by drawing through the entire draw pile. So if you ever draw the last tile in the stack, you would then immediately end the game. So once the game is over, we're going to look at all of the abominations and determine which of the awards and prizes go to which players. So this one completed their abomination, so they will get the done award. We'll give that to them there. Then they look at Teensy. This is looking for the fewest number of tiles, and these two abominations are tied at seven tiles apiece. So what we'll do is give the Teensy award to this one, and then we'll use one of these tie trackers to give three points to the other player as well. Showy is looking for the most colors, so this one has four, including the wild. This one has four total, and this one only has two. So again, these two are tied, so we use a tie tracker again to give that one three points and give the Showy prize to this one. And then we'll look at awards. On this game, we had five awards. So starting from the left, we've got Fiddly, which is looking for the most digit attributes. So if you look at all these, this one's got two. This hand right here has six by itself. Uh, I don't see any on this guy at all. So Fiddly will go to this person for two points. Brainy is looking for most heads. So here we've got two on this one. This guy's got one, two, three heads. There's two here. So this player wins with three heads for two points. This is looking for most ear attributes, so quite a few on this guy, at least four right there. Uh, let me see two on this one, and I see maybe three over here. So this guy is going to take the Lobie Award for two points. Squinty is looking for most eyes. Uh, I see maybe uh, quite a few over on this one, actually. This one's only got, I think, three or four, and then, okay, so yeah, definitely he's going to take that Squinty one. And then Chompy, last but not least, we got seven on this one, six on this tile, and I think, uh, those are the only, well, there's five over here on this tail, but that's it. So yeah, seven definitely going to this head here, so Chompy for two points to this player. That's all the awards handed out, but we also need to look at consistency of color. For example, this one has six different orange tiles and only one yellow tile. So orange is the predominant color, so they would get a total of six points for their abomination. This one has two gray, two purple, and two blue, so we can pick any of those colors to work from, and then we'll take this wild tile to increase the score by one, so a total of three for consistency for this guy. Over here we've got teal for four points. So totaling them up, this one has six points for consistency plus five for the awards for a total of 11. This one has 10 points for awards plus three for consistency for a total of 13. And this one has 10 points for awards plus four for consistency for a total of 14 points, making this the winner of the game. Piece of cake, right? If you ever find yourself playing with a younger audience, say aged five to eight, there are simplified rules in the instruction manual that you can use to make sure everyone <laughs> Did you let them in here? 
Anyway, players aged five to eight, you'll just set up a draw pile with all the tiles in it. You're gonna pass one torso out to every player and then players will just take turns drawing from the top of the pile and playing on their own abomination until someone completes their abomination and wins the game. You won't use awards or trophies, you won't use bolts, and you won't roll the die. You're just gonna draw and play until someone completes their abomination. And that's all you need to know to play the game. If you have questions, drop them in the comments. Happy to answer them there. Or you can refer to the instruction manual where you'll find everything that you need to... Hey, 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 hey!